Welcome to the amazing top YouTube channel. On this channel, we're uploading the top facts video every Monday. Let's get started. Tesla phone this 2021? It's been widely reported that US-based EV maker Tesla will officially launch the Model Pi phone later this year. It's not clear exactly when, if at all, but the tech rumor mill is awash with Pi talk. In September, devdiscourse.com reported 2021 didn't pass by Elon Musk. Every day in search engines, people ask the same question, is Tesla releasing a phone? Yes, we'll see Elon Musk's smartphone soon. In this video, we're going to discuss the new Tesla phone better than Apple iPhone. The video is going to be amazing, so make sure you stick till the end. Rumors that Tesla is indeed making a smartphone were bolstered after the world-famous design studio ADR released concept images. This made people wonder, is Tesla gonna go after the iPhone or simply create an entirely new market segment, such as a true-to-form satellite phone that works where traditional Wi-Fi or 5G services are absent, and able to mine cryptocurrencies anywhere, including on the planet Mars? How much? While speculations abound, there are numerous unanswered questions, such as how much would it retail for? Does it have a SIM card? What's the monthly charge for using Starlink? Five years ago, in the midst of manufacturing delays and other issues plaguing Tesla's planned Model 3 launch, Musk is said to have had a phone call with Tim Cook during which the Apple AAPL CEO proposed buying Tesla. Musk said he'd do it, but on one condition, I'm CEO. It reportedly took Cook a moment to realize Musk meant taking his job. Tesla and Apple are a lot alike than you would think despite being key players in completely different industries. Tesla designs and makes the body, as well as the software that runs its Model 3, Model S, and other vehicles. Similarly, Apple likes to control its iOS operating system and the design of its device hardware. Apple's iPhones, iPods, Watch are all iconic for their physical design and their incredible user experience. Perhaps the most remarkable parallel, Tesla's Elon Musk is as much a defining force for Tesla as the late Steve Jobs was for Apple. However, the two companies couldn't be more different in terms of other measures. You might ask, should I buy Tesla's $26 in annual revenue per share for a price of close to $400? That is, a price to sales multiple of close to 15 times? Or am I better off with Apple's PS of about 7 times less than half of Tesla's figure? In fact, Tesla's current PE at close to 200 times based on earnings over the last four quarters is way higher than Apple's PE multiple of 33 times. But is that enough to conclude Tesla is more expensive than Apple? Not really. We think it depends on your time horizon and risk appetite. Tesla's revenue growth is much higher, 55% average annual revenue growth over the last three years versus about 6% for Apple. However, Tesla's returns are lower. Specifically, Tesla wasn't profitable on a GAAP basis in 2019, and over the last four quarters, Tesla's net income margin, net profits as a percent of revenue, stood at under 2%. Using another measure of return, Tesla's operating cash flow margins, cash generated from day-to-day -day operations divided by revenues of under 10%, are well below the 27% posted by Apple. That said, Tesla's return metrics are getting better, while Apple's are staying flat or declining. According to Los Angeles Times review of PowerPlay, Tesla, Elon Musk, and the Bet of the Century, a forthcoming book by Wall Street Journal reporter Tim Higgins, who covers Apple, AAPL, Tesla, TSLA, and other tech companies. The review published Friday adds that Cook reportedly responded to Musk with an expletive and hung up the phone. For their part, Musk and Cook have denied ever speaking to one another. In December, Musk revealed on Twitter that he had considered selling Tesla to Apple but said he never actually talked with Cook. Replying to a report about Apple's plans to release a battery-powered, mass-market automobile, Musk said he reached out to Cook during the darkest days of the Model 3 program about acquiring Tesla for one-tenth of our current value. He refused to take the meeting, Musk said. Musk also denied that the interaction described in the book happened in a tweet on Friday following the publication of the book review. Cook and I have never spoken or written to each other ever, Musk said, adding that he had once requested a meeting with Cook to discuss Apple buying Tesla, but that didn't happen. And there was no conditions of acquisition proposed whatsoever. Tesla's iPhone app is certainly capable, allowing users to remotely unlock their car, control the climate, and manage to charge. The ability to use your phone as your car key is also nifty, but once you're in the car, where you truly want integration, the compatibility mostly disappears. If you're an Apple fan, chances are you're familiar with CarPlay and subscribe to Apple Music. If you also own a Tesla, you know that your car supports neither feature. You can't access Apple Music through a dedicated app in a Tesla, even though that's offered for Spotify. Instead, you have to stream directly over Bluetooth. 
While you can control volume and skip tracks, you can't easily access your entire library or find playlists the way you can with other cars. The most you can get is a list of songs from the current playlist or album. It appears that at least some engineers inside Tesla were aiming to get Apple Music to support up and running. In December, references of support for Apple Music briefly appeared in Tesla's in-car software. But Apple and Tesla don't yet have traction on actually launching the option, CarPlay, and Android Auto for that matter, is also nowhere to be found. On its website, Apple touts that CarPlay is available in over 600 models, including those from every major automobile manufacturer. Obviously, that's not true. At any given time, either the Tesla Model Y or the Model 3 is the best-selling electric car. The lack of Apple Music and CarPlay support in Teslas comes down to decisions from the car maker rather than Apple. Teslas are the de facto car of Apple's office parking lots outside of the executive section, and Apple employees would love nothing more than to get their Apple Music and CarPlay fix. Apple has been trying to get its services on any device or in any car that will have them, and Tesla integration would be a clear win for Cupertino. Apple Music is already built into the Porsche Taycan, as well as Android, smart TVs and speakers from Google, Amazon, and Sonos. Tesla doesn't want to give up control of its interface, but I don't think having CarPlay in, say, a small window would hurt the experience. Perhaps Tesla is worried that adding CarPlay could expose users to Apple services and therefore be a risk when Apple eventually ships its own vehicle. Still, it's puzzling. In addition to CarPlay and Apple Music support, there are other areas where the two companies could align. Tesla could choose to support Apple services like TV+, Tesla already offers Netflix and Apple Podcasts, Apple, on the other hand, could offer Tesla deeper integration with Apple Maps, better highlighting Tesla's network of chargers. The biggest barrier to an Apple and Tesla Accord is probably Musk himself. In 2015, amid Apple's first attempt to build a car, Musk said that Apple is the graveyard for ex-Tesla staffers. He has lambasted Apple's App Store policies and the Apple News app and slammed the company on a recent earnings call. Cook and Musk say they have never spoken or interacted, despite sitting just a few feet away in a meeting with Donald Trump in 2016. I have great admiration and respect for the company he's built, Cook recently said of Musk to the New York Times. I think Tesla has done an unbelievable job of not only establishing the lead, but keeping the lead for such a long period of time in the EV space. The Apple story is simple. Customers buy an iDevice, get hooked to Apple's device and services ecosystem, and keep coming back to Apple for more powering its cash machine. If Apple's revenue growth picks up, there's an upside, but that's not trivial with $270 billion sizes. If revenue growth stays low, there's a small upside or even a possible drop if multiples shrink. The Tesla investment thesis, on the other hand, is a little more complicated. Sure, Tesla sells cars and it's doing so more efficiently, but investors really see Tesla as a bet on the future of transportation. The stock makes sense at current valuations if you have high conviction in Tesla's massive self-driving leadership, its ability to scale up its software as a service sales, or if you think that the most important Tesla metric is Tesla's time horizon. Let us know your opinion in the comment section below. This was all for today. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon for more updates and notifications. Stay safe and we'll be back soon with another video.